Are you gay? How you gonna ask me a question like that? How do you marry a woman and then turn around and let a man bend you over? Ain't nobody bending me over. Oh, so, so you doing the bending? Is that what it is? Is this a fucking joke? Somebody tell me this is a fucking joke. Tell me, somebody, is it a joke? Hey you guys, I wanted to come on here and talk about a disturbing reality that I'm sure other YouTubers have covered and discussed, but now I want to give my own analysis of this phenomenon and explain this alarming occurrence and why it's problematic. So if you guys noticed the video that I played at the beginning, you'll see that it's a video from TikTok, which for some reason TikTok seems to host some of the most emasculating and eroded cases of degeneracy on its platform, specifically when it comes to the faction of black men that make videos for it. Now, while I can understand entertaining yourself as a means to escape boredom especially during the pandemic sometimes you have to take into question if what you're doing will compromise or deteriorate your image for your community and really even outside of the pandemic this should be the question you ask regardless to any environmental factors however one thing I will say is that this behavior is not one that's new it is expressed and heavily reinforced throughout media and society has a sort of unicellular lens of black men, particularly one that sees them as facetious and frivolous towards any endeavor or aspect of life. And let me expound to you what I mean when I say this. Black men collectively have facilitated an environment in which they are almost always looked at as the comic relief and they're becoming more and more associated with mediocrity, which I believe has a trickle down effect. For example, look at the way that Tyler Perry parades around in a dress as a stereotypical caricature of an elderly black woman. This not only distorts black men's image, but it also makes it difficult for those of us who do not behave in this manner to be considered pensive. This then manifests in everyday black men such as the one you saw at the beginning of this video, behaving in a nonsensical way. Now before I discuss this any further, please make sure you guys go and check out ashkicken.com for your skincare and beauty products catered specifically to us by us. All of their products are 100% organic and made from hand, so you get quality merchandise from a successful black-owned business. And the best part is if you use my code ChrisMore1 at checkout, you will get a 15% discount off your purchase. So please go and check out ashkicken.com. I make mention of all of these scenarios for a reason, and it's the reason for this video. The question we should ask ourselves, are black men at this point the face of femininity? Another example, and it's one that I see frequently, have you guys ever observed any interracial relationships with black men and women from the larger society? Have you paid attention to their body language? Do you notice if it seems like the black man is following behind the woman from a certain distance? Does it seem like his role as authoritativeness is diminished because she's buying something for him in the store? And it's something that I perceive as eviscerating in the sense that it makes him not needed and he serves as dead weight. Not that I really care about these relationships, but I made this observation and always wonder why it seems like with one I've encountered, the black man never seems to be right by the woman's side. And this also leads to another conversation that I feel would best serve as its own video because it brings into question how effective black male leadership is and if black men have enough efficacy to be in roles of power and authority. But because of the infamous shaming language and communication style that's saturated in our community, some black women will even now be conditioned to defend behavior that should be corrected and recognized. It might just be due to my traditional nature, but I believe that men should exude masculinity while women rest in their femininity. And when those are not balanced sufficiently, society questions the validity of black men's claims when they consider governance and life situations. And my intention in creating this video is to help you guys see why our image being exploited in a diminutive way like this presents issues and why one of those is thinking about how it will affect our legacy long term wise. Do we really want to be remembered in history as the ones who were always the funny black guys that nobody ever took seriously? The black guy that wore dresses and wigs to appeal to the larger society as non-threatening? And I also think that this is a result of us failing to learn from history. During the days of slavery, for those who don't know, the slave masters would make black men do unorthodox and castrating acts to strip them of their masculinity. 
the R word was one of those things. I can't say it because that's a trigger word for YouTube's algorithm to strike this video, but I think you guys kind of know what I mean when I say that word. They made black men wear dresses to exert power and dominance over them, and it's why I said at the beginning of this video that this behavior is disturbing because the fact that it continues and we're no longer slaves, yet we engage in slave-like behavior from centuries ago, makes me wonder if we think we've made any real progress aside from no longer working on the plantations. And some of you may even make the assumption that I have a problem with femininity and I can assure you that's not the case at all. I believe that it's something meant for women and men should display masculinity. And some may agree or disagree, which is fine, but again, it's because I'm a traditionalist in that regard. But I wanna show you guys this next image because it only emphasizes the point that I'm making. Now, as you can see on the screen, this is Billy Porter, and while he's a pretty good actor despite the numerous outlandish outfits he wears in public when he isn't acting, I believe he wears these things for attention as opposed to rebelling against society to be more accepting of men wearing dresses, but that's besides the point. Why is a black man the face of such a movement? Then when you take a look at this image of Pharrell in this sleeping bag dress, it really makes you wonder why there is such a concerted effort to put this type of imagery out there in the forefront. And it certainly doesn't help that black men are willing to do anything just to think they're taking a stand by proving how they're complicit in their distortion of their own image by association. And so really when you think about us trying to break these generational curses and pathologies, we must examine our behavior and dissect why our conduct can be perceived as problematic and undesired. We have to look at all aspects of our community and understand the reason for why we perpetually remain in a state of stagnation and at this point regression. And unfortunately, one of those reasons is black men's active participation in this borderline mental display of castration. I know we don't collectively possess foresight, so we often think in the moment of that time as opposed to thinking about how people will view history centuries from now. And I also understand that other communities of people have individuals that are similar, but the difference is that black men are the face of this feminine movement, save for the ones who are actually in the LGBT community, the so-called heterosexual ones who may have homosexual tendencies but pass it off as a joke usually are the ones who appear most frequently in these social media videos. The incessant indoctrination of absentee leadership is one that's all too common in our community and is partially responsible for why no one seems to have a specific answer as to improving the conditions of the black community. If we could reassess the way we react to situations and use critical thinking skills and foresight simultaneously in our decisions, then it has the potential to yield more favorable results. And some of us understand this, whereas some appear to miss the mark either deliberately or because they simply fail to make the correlation. And I really think black men's collusion in how their image is portrayed says something. Are black men purposely engaging in this escape contingency to absolve themselves of accepting leadership? And sidebar, before anyone else makes this preconceived notion, I am not saying femininity and leadership can't coexist because I am fully aware and understand that there are black women in areas where they're in leading movements. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying from the perspective of black men, why do they view leadership as an aversive event when leadership is something that really can only help your community? And let's think about it like this. If you decide to take charge and say, I'm no longer going to rely on other communities of people for sustainable resources because I'm gonna to come together with my people to create infrastructure, how is that something you wanna avoid? And that's why I believe there's some sort of obsession with not doing anything to reverse the direction we're going. This faction of black men will divest to other communities of people, sacrifice their masculinity as if it was there to begin with, create tension purposely with their own women, and attempt to disassociate themselves from their community to escape that inevitable responsibility that they know they have to face. And I want to go back to the escape contingency for a moment because this is the basis of my analysis. An escape contingency in psychology is defined as the response contingent or relying upon the removal of an aversive stimulus resulting in an increased frequency of that response. So let me break this down for, to you for you guys. So imagine a real life situation. Black men's behavior of divestment or femininity is the response to the aversive stimulus or occurrence which in this case is leadership. And so the removal of their own responsibility results in an increased frequency of this conduct. And this rings true because like I stated, if they can remove that responsibility and divest so that contact with their perceived aversion of leadership is removed and their feminine tendencies occur more frequently and divestment is increased, which to me is an outlier of their concept of 
positive reinforcement, it makes them think they're actually making some sort of progress. So obviously they have a warped outlook on what progression is. And I don't want people to create this narrative in their mind that I somehow have this supposition that this wholeheartedly is going to be the single thing that will prevent us from making progress. But I do think it's a part of why we continue to remain stationary. And no, I'm not saying I have a problem with anyone who believes the exact opposite of everything I just said. This is just my perception of it. And as I've stated, you can disagree or agree. And you guys, please understand that my analysis of situations are meant to make you think and question behaviors and pathologies that I believe to be contentious. Formulate your own opinions in the comment section and let me know what you think. Do you believe that black men are the face of femininity and have a habit of evading responsibility and leadership? Let me know in the comments section too if you think I should do a follow-up video to what I mentioned earlier about black men's avoidance of leadership or perceived leadership. And then lastly, let me know if you think that there's some reason I didn't mention that leads to this mentality. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. From the top, make it drop, that's some wet, that's some wet. Now get a bucket and a mop, that's some wet, that's some wet. I'm talking wop, 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 that's some wet, that's some wet. What kind of shit is that?